that we need to get more youth into the ecosystem technology is also a big game changer mm. okay so so lagos has been able to create that ecosystem for youth you know they have a platform in in a where they train them across the ecosystem and bring them on board okay and they become today entrepreneurs of themselves thousands of them that is a success story so these are things that we need to begin to look at that will up change the narrative of our culture and that's one of the things that we are doing today uh, from our company This podcast is sponsored by Go Money. Open a new bank account from your phone in less than three minutes. All right, all right, all right. We're back. New week, new episode. And as you know, there's a lot been going on in the entrepreneurship world today. Um, there's conversations of how Nigeria is transitioning from a uh, major oil based economy and we're thinking about alternative supplies. I have a huge bed in agriculture and we actually decided to bring an expert in this topic, someone that has over 20 years in agriculture in Nigeria. Yeah. He was voted top 100 most influential people in Lagos, yeah. right? And he has an amazing business, and he'll talk a little bit more about it, but I want to introduce you to Mr. Akin Alabi, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 what do you call the world most uh, renowned farmer. Is that what you say? Well, I, I, call it, I call it Africa most wanted agribusiness coach. Africa most wanted agribusiness coach. coach. There yeah, you go. As I call myself. So we also have Shalewa joining us from Studio in London. Oh, not from, from Studio, from London. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Shalewa, how are you today? I'm very good. I'm very excited about this episode. So um, I'm ready to go. That's good. That's Great. good. So yeah, I mean, saying on the current news, there's a lot going on. Um, obviously, Nigeria is it's a, it's a very interesting place right now. There's rises to petrol subsidy. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the petrol subsidy was taken away. Yeah. Now it increases the petrol price and diesel price as well. Yeah. Uh, we took hearing that um, even electricity companies are actually putting their prices up as well. Oh, so yeah, the businesses July. being affected a lot. Yes. Both agriculture and non-agricultural businesses exactly um and but before we dive into that i would like to kind of just know a little bit about a bit more about who okay. akinela is and kind of what kind of made you go into the business of agriculture all right thank thanks um thanks for having me here so basically yeah my my story is very funny so anytime i share my story people like wonder like oh, really um so so um my background was practically not agriculture so um if you look at where i started from i started basically studying accounting uh for my bsc and uh no, i started with insurance that was where i started from insurance from insurance um accounting from my accounting further to my mba so education there was nothing called agriculture wow. but the passion came in um when we we're still very little so on most times during holidays um i used to go with my grandfather uh, to his cocoa farm, uh, that's um, at um, Ilishon. So Ilishon is Remo. Remo is in Ogun State, mm. under a Kenya local government. So we used to follow him to cocoa farm holidays, you know. Um, so I tag along with him. So that was when I tend to understand what agriculture was all about. Farming basically was all about, you know, as a very young, young chap then. And um, holidays, I was always excited to go, you know, with him, spend days, you know, on his farms and all that. So um, when I, when I, f- graduated then i was like okay okay you're now out of school you need to so for me i'm always very particular about where can i add value that's one thing about me i'm always very particular where can i add value i don't want to jump into the train what everybody's doing so i'm always looking for an exceptional uh thing to do so i felt okay let me let me try out agricultural ecosystem because Mm. i believe that it's the only sector today that can actually help produce unemployment. And the reason is because it has a very wide ecosystem. So whatever niche. you study, you can find a niche in agri. Mm. Whatever, you can find a niche. So that was when I started 20 years ago. And I started very, it was quite funny. So it started like writing a blog. So I started writing blogs, research, and posting them on blog spots. And those days when I started, um, we do not have um, Twitter space. We do not have Instagram. We do not have mm. LinkedIn. So it was more of blogs. And then 
we had likes of Linda KG, the Bella Knight. They were the major blogs then, you know, where you get gist and all that. So we're just dumping articles, created our blogs called corporatefarmers.blogspot.com. Mm. That was the first thing we created. So it was an oh, article I mean platform. The blogspot days, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was what we created. And uh, we started writing blogs, research works, just posting it there, just to create the awareness mm. around the ecosystem. And just like joke, the blog, the blog transformed into a company. And today, the company has employed staff. The company today is partners, international partners, both Nigeria, both locally, both internationally. And it's a, it's a, it's a brand. Today, we've grown up to be a brand that has taken over the agri sector. But that was how the journey mm. started. For and, us. and and it's very interesting that you said you kind of started from a blog because there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there who might have something very small, yeah. but not end up transform. They might end up transforming into something big. Exactly. How did you? When did you? At what point did you say, okay, now we've actually like become big? When did you think that? kind of point hits okay so the point that i came it was when we started having int- uh, we started getting partners that were interested in what we're doing you know because um there's a different thing between you doing something and something between people people started getting interested in what you're doing and interested means that okay what will it cost me to put my investment in what you're doing mm. that is the point that okay fine we're getting there so we started creating innovative ideas around the ecosystem uh majorly around extension services okay you know uh whereby what, what do you mean by extension services so extension is more or less about creating more like um we 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 created a channel for the media part communication part mm. of agriculture so we link extension service information uh communication Closer to the farmers. Mm. So you have to dumb this down to me because a lot of stuff you're saying is a lot of jargon <laughs> that I don't even know no, no, about, no, right? I so you need to like, you need to kind of break it down to like kind of the most fundamental terms. So okay. let's say for example, right now, you're you're you talk about the extension services, right? Which yeah. is kind of bringing influential technology to the farmers. Yes. Does that mean like giving the farmers mobile phones and applications to support their farm? Like what does it more, actually involve? More related, you know, because today um information is power. And most of our rural farmers or smaller farmers do not have access to information. So what we do is we created platforms whereby we can get information directly to our local farmers. Mm. So we have to partner with um, local blogs. We have to partner with um, extension agents. We have to use youths on campus. Mm. We could reach out to smaller farmers within their community. Uh, you know, using... Uh, so thank God we have um, internet. Also, we have social media platforms. So mm. we're using all channels available to communicate innovations, ideas across the local farmers. That mm. was what we're doing. Mm. Using simple technology, ICT, to communicate information down to local farmers, which has helped today grow the industry mm-hmm. a lot. So give, give an example of like kind of, kind of stuff that you, you've done like and what, how did it improve the, the farming? Give like a typical example. Okay, let me give you an example. Um, we did a project um, about three years ago, thereabout. So it was like, no, let me start like this. So one of the major projects we did, that was about 10 years ago, um, we started what we call Agric Social Media Week. Mm. You know, there we have this Social Media Week. So we created our own Agric Social Media Week. Mm. So the idea was we brought in stakeholders across the entire country um, in Lagos. So we had a two-day social gathering event. Mm-hmm. And the idea was that, look, how best can we begin to uh, get youth more involved in agriculture? Yeah. That was all we did. So it wasn't, we used um, one of the biggest um, hubs in Lagos then, uh, where we had about over 500 gathering, mm-hmm. you know, to learn about agriculture. Mm-hmm. And today, that event we had about 10 years ago has transformed thousands of youths to find interests in agriculture. Oh, wow. And have become enterprise mm-hmm. of their own farms today. That is one. Then the other part we did was that we did what we call agri-campus tour. Mm. So the idea was that we're going from campus to campus. So we covered about 40 campuses across the country, um, across all states. Mm. We're traveling seriously, you know. Um, the idea was, first of all, change perception because we believe that most of the young minds that are studying agriculture in school uh, my partner always called them frustrated jambites. So what that means is that <laughs> what that means is that you might you might actually write uh, jamb and what you want to study your primary pharmacist or mm. medical medicine, and at the end of the day you were given agriculture as yeah. your last resort, mm. and because of the fact that you don't want to go back home because of um, the the phobia that look I don't want to stay another year at home, so you just have to take it. So most of them were for, we call them frustrated jambites. Because they're given a course they don't want to do. So they have to spend five years yeah. on campus, you know, without having passion and interest. So the idea was we went from campus to start changing the perception 
of the young minds. Like, look, mm. this is what agriculture is all about. Mm. It's beyond farming. So don't just think that agriculture is farming. Mm. It's a whole lot. A whole so lot you can find it, a yeah. niche that suits what you want to do mm. and plug it into the ecosystem. And from mm. there, you create wealth from it. Wow. That, that so, was what we did. So obviously, the, the there's a huge misconception that you probably would agree with me. It depends. Uh, on agriculture, so for most people who think about agriculture, they're thinking about like the local farmers. Mm. They're thinking about kind of going into the the dirt and and kind of selling yeah. whatever you kind of produce for yeah. that month or whatever it is in, yeah. in the city. Um, would you say agriculture is a lot more different than that, or do you think that's also true? And how 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 would you kind of frame it? Frame it, okay. So so you see, um, and that is that is a whole lot has to do with perception, and that mm. is the battle we are facing today in Africa. Mm. Um, Africa generally, because when you tell anyone that um, you are into, you're an agribusiness coach or you are into agriculture, studying agriculture, what comes to their mind as first perception is farming. Mm. So what they think in their mind is that, oh, that tattered, poor, wretched person, but no way. So I always use um, Akimi Adeshino, who is the president of AFDB, mm. as a reference point. I said, look, Akimi Adeshino started from being um, a minister of agriculture. Mm -hmm. And he has transformed the entire ecosystem, letting you to understand that, look, guys, it is way beyond farming. You can create a value chain system, mm -hmm. either from production, processing, logistics, marketing, mm -hmm. communication, you know, these are technology. These are value chain that is embedded inside the ecosystem. It's just mm -hmm. about you finding how best you can play around that system right, and create yeah. wealth from it. So it's big. So that perception is what we're trying to battle now. And that's why mm. I see folks like us always dress, we always style up, you know, we always dress clean, mm. we always dress fancy to ensure that people don't see the sector as being tattered mm. or for the poor, but definitely also for the rich. Because really today, if you look at America or developed countries mm. like USA, Canada, if you say you are a farmer, boy, you are wealthy mm. you are, because banks also want to give you loan, want to give you fund mm. because they believe that every year you are producing, you are selling, mm. and you are also making returns. Mm. But so, so that is perception you are trying to try to change around Africa. And we must start from somewhere. Interesting. And and so, where where do you feel like the main on earth value is li lies? So let's say the main areas where you think in agriculture value chain. That, okay, the people hasn't really looked into this, but this is like a gold mine. Mm. What would you say? So I would say processing mm. for Africa, basically, is about processing. Because Africa produces a lot. Um, we, well, we don't produce a lot, but we produce uh, averagely 40%. Mm. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll use cocoa beans as an example. Cocoa beans that which we produce in Africa. Ghana produce cocoa beans. Mm. Cote d'Ivoire produce cocoa beans. Nigeria just produce cocoa beans. Now, this same cocoa beans is exported to European country. And we have chocolate. Mm. Chocolate is also now imported down here, which you now buy in dollars. So we need to expand our processing beats a lot. Mm. And that's one of the things that um, um, some companies, some uh, banks are doing today in ensuring that they expand the ecosystem that Africa produce mm -hmm. and also process oh, for nice. markets. Yeah. And and so the processing issue, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a highly capital intensive. Oh activity, yeah, very right? very highly capital intensive. Um, and how do you kind of um, let's say you're you you I'm pitching to you or you're pitching to me. <laughs> I have the money to invest in, and you want to do the processing. Yeah. How do you go ahead to kind of convey that message that it's also um, investable? Yeah. Do you understand? Know because the, if it was bankable, there will be processing activities oh, sure, here. Definitely. So there must be a reason why it's not happening, right? So um, I always, let me use a commodity as an example. Uh, let me use oil palm as an example. Um, Africa consumes oil palm a lot. Uh, Average we consume about 70% of oil palm, uh, either from domestic consumption or for uh, manufacturing, mm -hmm. you know, from our soaps, uh, other things we use oil palm to do. Uh, majorly women, most of women produce, um, household produce has an element of oil palm in it. So today, if you look at the oil palm industry, um, to produce oil palm, just buy the seedlings. But to process is a whole lot. It's huge capital intensive. Mm. And it's about having half a billion before you could produce a standard oil palm from palm kernel oats, palm kernel cake. You know, this is capital intensive. But today, let's look at if we could begin to create an ecosystem whereby as farmers are producing, you're also creating 
an enabling environment for processing factories mm. whereby um, investors can see the opportunity around it, i.e. the development of partners, um, i.e. commercial banks, i.e. Um, private sector partners, uh, capital markets, can begin to see that as an avenue of creating wealth for farmers. Definitely, we can change the narrative holistically. So if I'm pitching to you and say, look, I'm producing oil palm. So where you come in as an investor is the processing bits because you have the money, mm. okay? And say, look, when we produce our finished products, we can export, we can use for local consumption and also use for different things. You know, um, we have the palm kernel cake used for feeds, mm -hmm. you know, different things that we can actually use these things for. And that is the opportunity around agribusiness. It's, it's, uh, the value chain is... It's like a money spinner. Nothing is wasted. Mm. There's, there's no waste in agriculture. There's no waste at all. Every simple thing, every, everything produced has a value mm. for another consumer. That is how it is. Mm. Interesting. Yes, do you have any, any interesting questions that you're thinking about? Yes, yes. You know, this is one of my favorite topic, favorite sectors. So I'm, I'm loaded with questions. So first of all, I really love how it's broken it down. As you say, you kind of start off with the farming, you know, upstream. Ms. Jimmy's talks about processing. But a lot of the challenges people face is not just in midstream, it's downstream. So I want to um, understand how are you educating the people that you speak to about the challenges such as logistics, such as storage? Um, we have this African free trade agreement, which is meant to be able to allow us to trade more with other African countries. But by the time we're moving goods from here, even to other states, we're facing so many issues. So I want to know what are the, what, what are the solutions that you're working on at the moment in this um in the downstream area okay so um for us yeah um there's always challenge in the ecosystem basically there's always a challenge but again if you look at what people like us like players in the private sector have been doing number one um over the years nigeria basically has has not invested a whole lot in agriculture and that is why you see that most of our local farmers today are still struggling a lot. They're struggling in terms of creating wealth around the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And that is why, that's why you see um, the AFCTFA uh, free trade zone agreement, the SAPZ agreement by AFDB, you know, is coming into place. Reason because Africa is a fertile land. Everybody wants to come in and do something. And, but if we don't create that channel whereby you can communicate what you want to do. Because don't forget, at the end of the day, the producer is still the small older farmer, that rural farmer in that village, you know. Mm -hmm. But if you don't communicate and let them see how their life can be transformed from what you're doing, you'll still be in the same circle, creating policies, mm -hmm. creating agreements, which definitely won't impact production. Mm -hmm. But definitely, if you can now begin to let them see reason and the opportunities, either for exports, for uh, local consumption, in you know creating markets and markets for them across all sectors, definitely it will transform the entire ecosystem. So, so for us, engaging government and engaging private partners are very key to us. And for me, I always use Lagos State government as an example. And the reason is simple. Um, I've been close to uh, the former Commissioner of Agriculture uh, for, for the past four years when she was in office. And Lagos has been very keen, despite the fact that it has the smallest land mm. across the country. They've been quite keen in producing or supporting their local farmers in terms of inputs and in terms of funding. And also importantly, youth. Because the future of agriculture is dependent on the youth. And because we have averagely about 60, 50 years aged farmers today. Mm. And those are the small older farmers. So what, how do you now transcend these youths into the farming community, into the farming sector? So you need to create, you need to close that gap. Let them see reasons why they can come into the ecosystem and create a niche for themselves where wealth can be created. So today, you say a lot of artists want to go into music. Mm. Not because music is, um, is so beautiful. No, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. But not because they get money instantly you have to take time to go to studios and all that but because they've seen likes of davido Bonner boy wheezy that have created yeah. wealth mm. from that entertainment industry the same thing agriculture is all about you must create 
an avenue whereby youth can begin to see where the wealth is, where the money is mm. in production, in processing, logistics, distribution, marketing, communication. Those are the ecosystem. And that's why I think that we need to get more youth into the ecosystem. Technology is also a big game changer. Mm. Okay. So, so Lagos has been able to create that ecosystem for youth. You know, they have a platform in, in a pair where they train them across the ecosystem and bring them on board. Okay. And they become today entrepreneurs of themselves. Thousands of them. That is a success story. So these are things that we need to begin to look at that will help change the narrative of our culture. Mm. And that's one of the things that we are doing today um, from our company. Okay. No, go ahead, Salewa. What are you going to say? So, I mean, I mean that's great. Um, I still have so many questions. So then <laughs> I'll, I'll still go more with the, the only negative question before I go to the other side. What do you think is the reason why we've seen a few scandals now and failures in agrotech platforms because, you know, they're raising money, they're raising foreign funds. And normally on these platforms, you'll see, okay, invest for six months, you get 12% return, invest in cattle or invest in, you know, oil palm, etc. But by the time these things, these companies are operating for like two years, um, things start to crumble. They struggle to start paying the money back. So from your perspective, why do you think this is happening? Because I think it's damaging the reputation of, of agri-tech um, investment opportunities in Nigeria. So, so thank you, Shalai, for that question. So I'm going to split that question into two so we understand what we're talking about. There's what we call agricultural technology. That is using technology as an enabler for agriculture. That's agri-tech. There's also what we call agri-investment. Mm. Okay, so those are two things. Now, but the unfortunate part was that um, those who were able to play on the intelligence of millions of Nigeria by scamming them used the word agritech because they were, to, they, were, they were able to ride on a technology platform, mm. created something uh, for an investment driven platform, mm. okay, to collect money, okay, with the aim of saying it is invested in agriculture. Now, let's face fact. You can't invest in agriculture without being patient. Let me use maize, for example. Maize, a commodity. If you, if you um, cultivate a maize today, it takes you about three to four months before you harvest. Okay? Now, between that span or period, mm -hmm. if you don't have certain things in place, there's no tendency that you get good output. Mm -hmm. Number one, good seed, a fertile land, proper management, an off-taker, that's for marketing, an off-taker. If those things are not in place, trust me, you can't get your yield. Mm. But if you have those things in place, you can get your yield. But what these guys have done, and which is quite unfortunate, they've damaged the industry a lot, which we haven't tried now mm. to see how Bezuko begin to create um, a, an ecosystem that is investable. They, they are giving us a whole lot of tax now because mm. they've done quite damage to the industry. Is Let them see reasons and let them say, look, a farmer needs to be patient. There is no way you put an investment into a commodity and not be patient enough to get a yield on return. And forget, don't forget, agri has high risk and is very risky mm. in terms of investment. But you need to be also very sure that once your practice is quite accurate, you know, you are, you are, dotting, the, you are, you are dotting it as you're as you are, as you are producing. For example, I want to cultivate maize. I must ensure that my, my, my soil is of, is of good test. I have proper seeds. I have an offtaker at the end of the harvest. I have proper management. I have irrigation system. If there's no water, if I can, if I can take those things, then I can have 90 to 100 percent in return on investment. Mm -hmm. Those are guarantees. But these guys that have gone ahead to claim or to scam people in the name of agricultural agritech, mm. I've just damaged industry by not even having that knowledge in the first, of what, place. In the first place. So mm -hmm. what they do is just to create a platform. Bring your money and lie to investors that they're going to get their returns. And we know, and this is because I have, I have knowledge on financial analysis and financial background. Most of this money they collect from individuals are not even spent on agriculture or to local farmers. They just go to the, just site one farm somewhere, wear their t-shirts on them, take pictures, and they said, oh, this is what they are. Mm. You know, we, we've seen stories like that. But that is not what agri-tech is all about. Agri-tech is, is using technology as an enabler for agriculture. Now, why are these technologies? Your simple mobile phones is an ICT, mm. okay, whereby you can use to, to sell your markets, 
to, to provide information to farmers. Okay, that is what it's meant for. Then if, even if you are creating platforms, okay, um, easy, i.e. you want to create a, a, a solution that would help farmers test the soil, nutrients, soil component easily. Okay, these are technology, using drone technology, using AI solutions, um, automated um, mechanized farming solutions. These are technology-driven platforms. But when you now say agri investments, so it means you are creating an investing platform to drive agriculture. Mm. And these are basically done by um, DMBs, the commercial banks, or capital market players, mm. whereby they will assure you that, okay, if you are putting your one eye into this, using the which is well regulated, you can get your return on investment. But it's quite unfortunate that between the last two, three years, we've had a lot of uh, those who claim to be doing agri-tech and basically as farmers in the industry. Mm. All right, Salema, go ahead. I think you have a lot of questions. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you go for the next couple of hours. Yeah, so, um, okay, so great. Okay, you, you've broken that down. So then on a more a lighter and positive note, let's talk about the trends. What trends are you seeing in terms of how technology is helping along the value chain so we've got um you know in the farming you know arena you've got maybe robotics that are being that are being used in other parts of the world is that a trend coming in africa um when you're when you're getting towards you know midstream and downstream there's platforms um that you can there's applications that can be used again to track uh the products through the value chain so i just want to understand um, what trends are you seeing? Are you even seeing artificial intelligence coming in? Or is it still early days in Africa that we're seeing that in agriculture? All right, thank you. I think one of the things, one of, one of the profiles that you do read about me is that I authored a book called The Rise of Digital Agriculture, the okay. RDA. Mm. And um, I've, I've, I'm a keen, I have keen interests or I'm, I'm an expert in digital agriculture. Uh, reason because the future of the sector is technology driven. You can't take it away from it. Mm. Uh, from precision um, and to digitalization. And the reason is this. Um, today, let me give a, a typical example, practical example, which will answer Shaliwa's question. If you're, if you're cultivating in about, um, let's say, 2,000 hectares of farmland, mm. 2,000 hectares, and that's quite large, okay, and you want to spray on the 2,000 hectares, on a spray, either your fertilizer, a boom spray. I want to use. I want to spray a fertilizer. I want to use um, pesticide for for pests and all that. Um, there's what we call the um, the manual spraying system, um, knapsack. Mm. You know where you have to. Yeah, and then you know, that's pressure, a knapsack. Yeah. You have to apply pressure. Mm. And to do that on two thousand hectares, you need averagely. Let's say it depends on what you have at hand. Mm. Your your cost. Let's say you, fifty. 50 labors, and it takes them about a month to complete. Maximum, a month. That's 2,000 hectares oh, wow. yeah, that's to a lot. complete. You're going to spend money because you are paying them every day, every, mm. da daily wages. You're going to feed them. You're going to feed them. And you spend other costs that mm. you won't even think of. Now, put that aside. Now, let's take drone technology. Mm. Drone that can harbor a gallon of water or a gallon of um, pesticide, mm. about two, three liters. And it goes on 2,000 hectares mm. in batches. Mm. And in less than, Max, let's say five, six hours, depending on the speed and the control measures yeah. of the drone, mm. always controlling it, and you're done. Interesting, yeah. So you could see, those are the two sides. Mm. So for us, we will say that technology is about making agriculture more efficient mm. and effective. That is what is bringing on board. While manual practice is still there, it's still there, but you spend more and it all tells on your body. Mm. So today, majorly in Africa, the idea is how can we begin to bring in, tech how can we let our farmers, smallholder farmers, see reason why they need to absorb technology-driven solutions mm -hmm. for their farm operation or farm mm -hmm. enterprise. It's hard. It's hard because the mentality they have is that technology is going to take away my job, it's going to take away my livelihood. Is that you think the mentality farmers have? You know what you think? Yeah. yeah. You know, because someone that collects wages of two five every day 
and you tell them, look, sorry, road is going to replace what you're doing. It's that's a that's a gap mm. for the for the average oh, yeah, farmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? Lot, yeah. So there's a lot. So it's about education. Mm. Like, look. But then again, though, some farmers are actually receptive to this technology, but they can't afford it as well. So how do you look at it from that perspective? So so te- so technology again doesn't have to be expensive mm. to be efficient or to be effective. Yeah. Now technology comes in various dimensions. Uh, let me use another example: is tractor mechanization. Okay. Um, today we've created a couple of guys that have done something quite unique, whereby like your Uber system, you can run mechanized farming like that, just with the press of a button on your phone, mm. and you can get service of a mechanized of, of a tractor on your farmland. Mm. It's as simple as that, and that is where we are going today in Africa. As I said, in Nigeria particularly, we are not there yet, and we understand, but gradually the world is shifting towards that direction. Mm. And we can't take it away from that. And that, again, throws back to the kind of leadership we've had within the past years that have taken in charge, or that have been charged of agriculture yeah. in yeah, Nigeria. I agree with you. Because so, everything still boils down on who is leading mm. the sector in terms of policies, in terms of uh, innovations, I, who is driving conversation with private partners. Mm. So these are things that if you don't plug in together, we'll still be struggling. And it will be hard for technology, like she has mentioned, AI technology, artificial intelligence, robotics, to mm. find its space within African agricultural ecosystem. So, I mean, I, I understand the point of innovation and I understand the point of kind of these um, fancy technologies that you're bringing in. Yeah. Uh, or they are there out there and they could possibly come in to improve the market. But I think there are still some fundamental challenges that needs to be solved All before right. those things can actually like be successful. Yeah. Right. And I want you to just touch up on those uh, fundamental challenges that you feel like the agricultural sector needs to have in place before mm. innovation can come into support. Okay. So uh, number one, number one challenge we've had basically within the Nigerian agri- agricultural ecosystem, it's about leadership. Leadership in terms of who, is that, who actually is running the sector, who is influencing the sector. So what I mean influencing the sector means that if I have a minister or a commissioner mm. and I see the innovative ideas is bringing on board, mm. that would want to let me do more or add value to the sector. I'll give an example again, Lagos State. Sorry I keep saying Lagos because of the fact that I've seen what they've done over the yeah. years. Um, the former commissioner of agriculture, which is a female, has been quite innovative in bringing ideas towards agriculture. And the reason is this. If you have a government that understands um, or that creates a room, an enabling environment for every sector to thrive, especially agriculture, mm. it makes it easier for the cabinet or for the minister, for whoever is in charge of agriculture, to now begin to create uh, programs, mm. innovative ideas that would drive the sector. Mm. For Nigeria as a country, for within the last eight years, we've had, Bwari, the past president tried his best in creating policies. Rice, you know, was there, created policies. For, we have the, um, the outgrowers came uh, from the CBN, which wasn't successful anyway. Uh, a lot of policies were created by the government. But the question is, those are supposed to drive those policies. Mm. Do they really drove it to the latter? Were there any output from those policies, mm. were they effective enough? So those are things we need to look at. That look, when the leadership understands the role of agriculture, it's easier for those policies or innovations to now thrive easily. Let me give you an example. Uh, we worked on a project with um, the past commissioner, and it was quite a very funny project, which nobody even would think about. So what was the idea about? We we're looking for ways we could begin to get our kids, children, to, to embrace agriculture right from, right from um, I won't say teenage now, right from second, okay, secondary mm. school, teenage, teenage age and probably kids. So I'm sure you know Super Striker. Right. You know, you know Super Striker? I probably wouldn't know. But ah, right. okay, <laughs> that was, so it was, it's a comic book, mm. but it was more, more on football, you know. And um, so we're trying to create ideas where we could get kids love agriculture mm. right from their, you know, beginners. any age, beginners. Yeah. So we created um, an idea called um, a gross eco school agri comic. So the idea was we used the governor's face, the deputy's face, oh, wow. their wife and their kids 
to tell a story mm. around what the government is doing um, in, agri- in, the, in the agri space. So we use the example was the first edition was um, we use the rice ecosystem. So the question is, what was government doing around rice? We had the Mota Rice Mill, which was launched uh, when during the last administration. Yeah, to tell a story around agriculture using characters like the governor Iriti, you know, different characters were there to tell a story on how rice has been grown. I can take it to markets. Mm. I can be involved in the ecosystem. So we use simple grammar, simple English that they could read and understand. Mm. That was what we did. And today we have that pro- we have that particular comic book across different districts in Lagos State. And that was a very innovative idea. Yeah. To let the kids understand where their food is coming from. So we call it catch them young. Okay. So so it's all comes down to, to the those leadership. Kind of leadership yeah, to, to drive we'll, this type we'll drive of programs. programs. Forward, yeah. So okay, it's, it's as simple as that. So, I mean, so do you have a question? Because I've got, I've, got, I've got a couple of more, actually. But do you have any questions? <laughs> I know you have a lot in your mind. I want to be able to get that out. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, my questions were now going to see if we can get some value for our listeners. So if you were going to pick your top three crops um, based on yield, based on time to harvest, you know, based on how lucrative it is, you know, in general, what would you advise people get started with um, in agriculture? All right. So I'm going to split the crops into two. We have the short-term crops and the long-term crops. Mm -hmm. So same thing as saying arable crops and um, cash crops. Mm. So um, if you, the one that actually wants to make your money within the frame of three, three to four months, three to five months, you can venture into the arable crops. And these are maize, soya beans, rice. You know, it takes three months um, germination period using proper practice. Mm. Um, also, there's horticulture, uh, that is uh, vegetables, lettuce. So those are investable crops within short term. Okay. And today we have a lot of farmers that even a lot of farmers that are more into horticulture now, mm. you know, short term crops uh, and they export it. Yeah. Pepper, habanero, tomatoes. Those are short-term crops you can venture your money into. And between this period of three, three, four months, you're done. You make your money, you sell to markets. Mm -hmm. And you can go for another cycle again, production cycle again. Fine. But if you're the one that you want to wait, you have that patience to wait, then you can venture into long-term crops. And those are cash crops that take about three three to four years based on the seed Mm -hmm. to germinate. And these are examples like um, oil palm. Uh, We have the cashew. We have citrus, there's oranges. Um, so those are, and of that category, are long-term crops. And the reason is because long-term crops, um, is a, is, um, they are wealthy crops. They have that underneath wealth in it. Cocoa, mm-hmm. you know, um, cashew. I've mentioned cashew. I've mentioned um, premium cocoa, yeah, for, for chocolates and all that. Yeah. Because once you harvest, you are a millionaire. Because instantly, you want you process or you export. So it means that if you want to venture into any of this value, any of this um, type of crops, short term or long term, you must be also sure of your capital. What does my capital hold at the moment that mm-hmm. I can carry? Is there short term crops that, okay, I want, to, I want to go for another cycle instantly? Or the ones that, okay, let me just invest into this. I can wait for three years to start germination before I can begin to process and all that. Fine. It depends on what your wealth or your capital is yeah, at, at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Shalewa. And, and, and just another follow-up question. I want to get technical. If I, let's say that I, um, I'm into shea butter, for example. I create my nice shea mm. oil. I want to export it. I want to know practically, yeah. how do I go mm. about making trade agreements with other countries cool. um, and, and people I'm going to export it to? What does someone do when they're at that stage? Okay, so for that kind of commodity, um, the things you need to be very... Things you need to know are, sim- are technical things. Number one, who is buying? Uh, because every country has its own trade of agreement or its own trade terms mm. on any commodity they want to buy. Um, and these are dependent on exposures um, and, um, and uh, the, the quality of what you're producing mm. from here. And that is why you see that... Um, Share, what she mentioned, for example, share butter. If you want to export that, first of all, you need to know from which country is buying your share butter. Yeah. So once you understand the terms of agreement or whatever is required to buy, 
that it makes it easier to meet up to standard or produce for them. Um, a typical example is um, our cashew. So once you're once you're once you're um, called, uh, producing cashew for a specific market out of the country, you must understand the specification of what they require. You know, either they want it very dry, mild dry, or still wet. It depends. So those are expectations that you require before you can begin to export. Because majorly, most export products are always very dry. You know, to avoid uh, custom wala and all that. So, so the specification required by the purchasing country determines what you, the seller, or what, what, um, what particular, um, can I say, production, can I use the word ratio now, or standard mm. you put in practice or place before you can export. For example, today we export our pepper. Mm. Some want it dry, like uh, what we call in Yoruba, tagungu, very dry, grounded for export. Some want it fresh, so they can get there the next day. So it depends on who is buying. So these are simple determinants that helps you as a producer to meet, um, to meet export countries that want to buy from you. So I think I've been able to answer your questions with that. Hope I did. Yeah, that was amazing. Oh, that was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. So what I've got from that is actually someone should start at the end first and then work back in a way. If you know your yeah. your end goal is to export, you should really do the research first. That was very helpful. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So before we dive into trivia, I've got one more question before we get to trivia. And I see some <laughs> trivia questions here that are very interesting. But All right. um, so before before I do that, I want to just talk, talk a lot about kind of the two key companies and I think about agriculture that comes to my mind and I just kind of go with top 10 companies and, and activities that they're working on so I look at Dangote Foods and yeah. the, the food chain business and then I also look at BUA Foods as well probably not called Dangote Foods it's a different yeah, division but, but yeah. Dangote right Yeah. and these are probably one of the top five companies in Nigeria right I mean obviously yeah. if if you kind of include their other activities, exactly. but, but let's exactly. just, if you kind of exactly. focus on agriculture, they do, do that very well. Yeah, exactly. Right? Very, very So why do you think they are successful and what are kind of the other companies who are looking to aspire to be of that nature, of that nature. Uh, um, kind of adopt? Mm, you see, um, today we have other other companies uh, that actually, I'll, I'll call them listed companies on the Nigerian, Nigerian exchange group or exchange markets. Uh, we have Prexco, we have Okomu Oil, went into the oil, oil, oil business, also palm oil business, and they are traded on the Nigerian on the floor of the exchange. And the um, reason because, you see, today, a major challenge we have in Nigeria is that we've not, be, we've not built what I call generational farms. So you say a farm existing for two, three years, max four, five years, then it dies. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of poor management, uh, the owner died, then once it died, the children are not interested, everything goes boom. Uh, if you look at the likes of Dangote, way back his great grandfather, his grandfather, the Dantatars, they've been farmers trading across different parts of the country for years. So that's why you've seen generational farms like that that have been existing over the years, which is simple. Now, I make, make, made an example of countries in Europe and America that today, when you get to Europe and even South Africa, you see farm existing between the range of 100 years and 500 years. So, you see, when we have farms like that, it's easier for them to have access to a um, fund because they've lived, every, they've lived the life. So, from generation to generation, they understand what it means to run a successful farm. But that is a problem today we have in Nigeria and Africa, basically, because of the mentality. Once the owner dies, the structure dies, then the children are interested. And that is a big problem today in Africa. So to, to be like that of Dangote, we need to begin to build successful generational farm business that even as a father, there must be somebody within your family that would find some interest. Why do you think Dangote children are also part of the business? Reason because once Dangote leaves his age, the children can also carry on. Mm. So today we need to begin to build a structure that says, okay, once the father is no more there, or the parents are no more there, there are other lineage that will take up the responsibility, okay, and carry the business forward. And those business can transform, bring innovative ideas, change the entire uh, management structure, and those structures can live longer. Mm. And those has made likes of Dangote, Boa, you know, have been successful 
for years. So you really think the succession strategy that is oh a, yes, we're, we're, exactly. When yeah. we can put that in place, then trust me, we would have farms that will live way longer above hundred years. Interesting. Okay, time. Let's let's dive into trivia now. This is kind of a fun, but fun bit. Uh, just tests your knowledge on on your industry. So there's a. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, five questions this around. It's not that much. Five okay. questions, right? I will try. Uh, you have to get f- all five right to be claim an expert in your sector. Okay. It's I'll very, try. very okay. simple questions. It's okay. like primary school. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's start off with the first one. Is What is the process called which plants convert sunlight into food? Is it into food? But anyways. Come again, sorry. What is the process called where plants convert sunlight into food? Plants convert sunlight mm. into food. Mm. I don't know. I I don't think it's food, but I would I would I would give the answer and then hopefully maybe somebody corrects me. Let me give me. Say <laughs> that again. I really do. I really, you know when you are pursuing money, most of these things do not come. Who comes to your head anymore? <laughs> Photosynthesis. Oh yeah, yeah. Sure. I told us in secondary school. Oh, okay. Correct. Photosynthesis. Yeah. What is sunlight. the Second question. So you got that wrong. <laughs> yeah. What is the world? What is the most widely grown crop in the crop in the world? The most widely grown crop in the world. Should I say maize? Because that is because that can be converted into very well. It's it's, it's part of the grain com, grain grain family. It could be rice. It could be grain. It could be rice. It could be maize. It could be soya. What is your final answer? I'll say maize. That's correct. Okay, and it's within the grain <laughs> family. <laughs> What type of farming involves raising of livestock? What do you what do you call it? What f- what type of farming involves the raising of livestock? What type of farming involves raising of livestock? Hmm. Well, it's livestock. It's cow, cattle, cattle, sheep, goats. So what kind of what is, is it livestock what, farming? What is the no? What is the, what is the, 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 the name? Animal husbandry. <laughs> would I give you that? I don't, I don't, know, know. <laughs> I don't know if I should give you that. Okay, okay, I'll let you, I'll let you have that one. You yeah, did get that right. It's, 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 it's animal husbandry. It's boundary. animal husbandry, yeah, because yeah. It's, it's, a whole f- it's a flock. Okay. <laughs> Next question. What is the term for the practice of growing different crops in the same area in a sequent season? Is that mixed cropping or multi cropping? Yeah. No, 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 no. You have to get the right term. I'll repeat the question. What is the term for, for the practice of growing different crops? In the same area, in sequent season. In sequent season. Yeah. So you're you're doing something in different seasons. So all the crops are in the same area, but yeah. in different seasons, they get moved around. I got to We call it mixed cropping. I don't know. Multi cropping. The, the right term. I, are you giving up? Yeah. Give Give me the right. Give me the right <laughs> term that you have there. The right term is crop rotation. Oh, so when you rotate okay, the crop in different areas. Okay, I understand what you say. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> world, world best <laughs> farmer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. What is the main nutrient that plants absorb from the soil to help them grow? From the soil. Yeah. Ah, these are these are a little bit science. Well, they're not scientific. <laughs> they're just basic questions, actually. Um, there's a nutrient. Uh, I don't know. I, I I can't remember. Nitrogen. Nitro- okay, yeah. Nitrogen is made. So you how many did you get right? Two. Two, two out of five. five. Ah, that was bad. That was bad. That, you know, when I get to a stage, you start pushing money. Uh, you don't care about it. No, nobody, nobody really. You need to ensure that look what you're investing is really yielded. Yeah, but no. but it's fine. Um, it's a large ecosystem, and uh, we believe that uh, conversations like this will help us move move further. Definitely, definitely. No, nice, really nice having you. But before we before we go, there's actually a final question that works for our guests. If you were the president of Nigeria. Uh, what would you do differently? If I'm president of Nigeria, yeah. Whoa, what would I do differently? Okay, I would, because I'm a farmer, I would, I would invest. I would let. I would encourage our youth to invest their time and energy in the value chain because so that we can reduce unemployment. Mm. That's so what I would do differently. Get more youth into agriculture. Exactly. Interesting. Exactly. Just like we have more youth into entertainment industry. Yeah. But the internship is glamorous. It's easy to attract the youth. Exactly. Well, we can also make that also glamorous. In the UK, it's about get what will attract them to join the sector. Yeah. It's as simple as that. I just should always say agriculture is sexy. So to mm. make it sexy, you must use things that are attracted or attractive mm. to them. That's all. No. <laughs> That'll be a good chat. Thank you. Thank I really you. Like that. I really like that. Yeah. Salewa, what's up? How are you feeling? Can you hear us? Can you see us? Just, just pause right now.
This podcast is sponsored by Go Money. Open a new bank account from your phone in less than three minutes. <laughs>